Hey, what is it guys? So welcome back to the mobile game tutorial. So, um, we were pretty much done with the game in general, but now we needed to do, um, to get started with doing the level. So, level 1, this guy over here, needs to be redone. And uh, we're gonna keep on going and making level 2 as well in future episodes. But right now, let's tackle the level 1. So the first level in any any game should be some kind of, of way to introduce you to the game. Taking a look at our game, what kind of mechanics do we have? We pretty much only have movement, we have uh, sliding the camera around, and we have a boost. And that's, if we really go to the basic, that's pretty much really all we have. So in the first level, we'd have to make sure that the player knows how to move. And most likely, we could actually stop it there. So you learn how to move, and then in the second level, you learn how to rotate your camera, so we could be putting some obstacle in front of, of the camera where he has to rotate, and I also give it some text somewhere. And then finally, in say the third level, we could teach him how to use the uh, boost button, maybe with a jump pad or maybe with a destructible door. All right, so right now this is our level one, and we we would like to introduce at least um, two mechanics in this level one: how to move and also how to win. So. I will just go ahead and remove all of the objects we do not need. So that's pretty much everything but the main camera, wind box player, canvas, event manager, level manager, and a respawn point plus also the directional light. So all of this is now gone and we start off fresh. Okay. So I'll go inside of my gameplay prefab, spawn some floor tiles, maybe, um, maybe some 4x4. Four and we might want to flip them over to have this nice pattern. Okay, so this will do the job. Let's actually make our level go forward. So just like this, right now I'm selecting this and I do Control C, Control V to copy. But before we actually go ahead and just create our all masterpiece, what we'll do is we'll go under a game object, create empty, and then we will move that object to the origin and then name it level. Let's make sure that the platform are children of that so we can simply turn it on or off or move it around using this parent game object. And this way it's almost it's like really more uh, clean in your scene. Okay, so let's keep going. I'm going to paste that. And that should actually be good enough for level one. But now I'm thinking I want to make it a little bit fur uh, a little bit um a larger because we're gonna have a gold, silver, and bronze time as well. So the people who know how to use the boost, then they're gonna be able to get the gold time. And if they're really, really new at the game, then they might not know how to use the boost, and they're gonna make it in say the bronze or silver. So like this sounds fine, but um, I do not want them to die just yet. I don't want them to fall off the stage. I simply want them to just experience uh, the movement. So what I will be doing is create some borders, but first. Let's take the wind box and actually put it somewhere here. There we go. And then we can go ahead and create some borders. Now there's multiple ways we could be doing this with what we have. Um, oh, and you know what? What I'd like to do is also put a curve tile in there as well. So he knows that you know fix uh, the physics is is something in this game, and he can use it to its advantage. So let's do curve tile, say right about here, and it's looking like it doesn't have the right um, material, so I just go ahead and change that. There we go. So maybe something of the sort, maybe flip it around as well, so we go back to this, and this would be level one. And also make sure that the uh, spawn point is a little bit higher. Now it's at 0 0.25, I think it's just perfect, so I'll just leave it on that. Try to play the game. And here we go. Oops, forgot, <laughs> forgot to put a mesh collider on that, so let's do this. Mesh collider, hit apply. And then we can press and play. And there we go, that's the first level, it's as simple as that and we don't even need to make it harder than that. We just need the player to understand that he has to use a joystick to control the game. Okay, so like I said earlier, let's go ahead and make some borders so people don't fall off. Let's open up 3ds Max 
and simply create some kind of box. So right now this is, I believe this is one, two, three, four. This is four by four, uh, like the name said. And we can create a four by four border by simply doing something of the sort. So maybe, maybe one meter large is a little bit too much. We just have to experience with that. And um, what else could we be doing with that guy? I will go ahead and right click on it, convert to editable polygon, choose my vertex, select all of my top vertex, and uh, I just realized that I'm not really 4x4, four four. I'm, I'm actually 1x5 right now, so I'll just move that. There we go. And I will make this a little bit thinner by bringing the Y down. So maybe 0 0.5, like so. And this is going to be my wall. Now we could also be putting the material on top of it, just for uh, testing the UV out right now. And what I feel like doing is actually um, making the UVs... Now let's just go ahead and make the UV, yeah. So I'll go ahead and just unwrap. And I will unwrap all of these. At the same time, do a flattened mapping, so I have a clue of what's going on. We can move them over now, and um, we might actually want to split this in two, or we could extend our UV instead. So I'm thinking about having two of those rectangle, I mean two of those um, texture in a single rectangle. To do that, I will go ahead and just flatten mapping one of them, then flatten mapping the other, and they should stack because they're pretty much the same object. Now with that done, I will choose my vertex, I will just bump these two up here and then take the two last vertex and just extend them towards the right, like so. Now if you want to make sure that this is perfect with your UV, you can simply take these two and manually set them on two. We can do the same exact thing for the up, so I'll be putting that on the one and now they should be perfect on both sides. Okay, I will add another unwrap UVW and I will do the top. So for the top, we could be making a lot of the, actually let's do the top and bottom at the same time. So take these two, flatten mapping, and um, two, 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 I will just select them here and I'll do them one by one, so never mind that. Flatten mapping this one, this one and then flatten mapping this other one and we should be able to select them now. So once that is done, I'll just go ahead and take my uh, face tool and scale this however I'd like. So I was thinking about uh, maybe something like that. Let me just bring that up. And then I'm going to take these vertices. Let me just move them so I don't have the same problem as I just said. I'm just going to move them right here. So I will take these two, put them back other place. So that's one, uh, that's zero in U, and then these two, that's one in V. Then take these two and just drag them as much as I'd like. Uh, maybe you want to drag them until we hit four, like that, or maybe even eight. Who knows? This could actually do the job. Okay, so it should work for below as well. Now, as for the sides, we just pretty much do whatever we'd like. So, unwrap. And I should only have these two objects because when I put my unwrap modifier, I only had these two selected. That's another way you can avoid um, the mess we had a little bit earlier. And let's just play with that. We could simply be making a single face here. Or maybe two, why not? Let's try with two. That's actually not bad. Okay. So here's our border. Let's go ahead and import it. So we'll simply do the same exact thing I do usually. I will go to my um, asset folder. So asset, artwork, models, and then four by, well, it's four by 0 0.5, let's just say four X border. Okay. 
and then we can simply put that somewhere in the game. Okay, we should be able to find it somewhere here under models. We'll do full exporter, put the tile green material on top of it while we are there. And let me just uh, get the right angle. There we go. Now let's make a prefab out of it by drag and dropping it inside of the floor tiles folder. Okay, so we got our prefab. Um, I forgot to clean it up before we left 3ds Max, so I will go ahead and do that really quickly. Make sure that the, the pivot is in the center, and to do that I will first rename it. This is the 4x border, then I'll go under reset x form, reset selected. I will collapse these changes by uh, right clicking convert to editable polygon. And then we will also change the pivot pivot point by going under hierarchy, affect pivot only, and then center to object. We will actually leave the pivot here, I think. Yeah, let's go and leave the pivot here, and but uh, let's do the usual rotation we do so. Put the Y axis upward, like that. And we need to rotate this as well. Let's go ahead and rotate the... Uh, the Z axis so it points forward. Okay, save this. And here we go. So now our object should be clean, a little bit cleaner than it used to be. And let's have a look at it. So, where exactly is it? For some reason, I can't see it. So, we'll simply drag and drop it back in the game and uh, remake a, uh, a prefab. So, delete that one. I'll go and just put the good material on it. Position it like so. And then we are going to take this, put it inside of the floor tiles. Okay. Great. So once that is completed, we can simply snap that like so on our object, and we should be pretty much good to go. Let me just try something really quickly. This could do the work, or you could be putting it next to it like that, but what I'd like to most is actually put it in the middle, like so. Good. So here is my first border, let me just put that on this side as well, and keep going like that. Oh, by the way, make sure that you are inside of the uh, level object so we don't mess up everything. So i uh, just put everything in there so we don't get uh, really messy in the scene. Duplicate. And then I will go ahead, just duplicate one of them, place it accordingly on the, on the axis. And we should be good now. To make sure, I will use the snap method that we've talked about. But I actually can't because it's using the vertice and we don't have any vertice in the center. We made this object really uh, really small, really um, optimal, so we're simply going to be using our own eyes or we could be putting it on 0 0.25 up here. Okay, and then we just keep on going. Now of course there's a way for the player to fall, but he'd have to be uh, really trying hard. Or if you really do not want him to fall, then in that case, you can simply raise the borders a little bit. But you know what? I think I'll be leaving it pretty much like that. And that will do the job. Let me just make sure that we are centered. So 0 in X and then minus 2.25 in Z. Okay, I'll do the same thing on the other side. Just move it here. And I'll leave it like that. Okay. So that's pretty much our first level, guys. Oh, you know what? Let's uh let's bring this inside as well. So minus one point five. Oh, minus one point seventy five. There we go. Oh by the way, we still need a mesh collider on those, so just go ahead and put it on only one of them and then hit apply. It is going to modify every instance of that prefab. And we should be good to go.
except for that little glitch, so we'll fix that in a moment. But let's go ahead and just move it a little bit here, so this way there is no more Z fighting and it doesn't look too um, too glitchy. And by the way, you can simply move it by 0.1, it's still doing the, the, the actual math, so uh, right here my object is at 13.75, I'll just be putting it on 13.76 and we should actually be good to go. There we go, no more easy fighting. Okay, so what I was thinking about doing is uh, finding some new texture that we're actually not finding, but we could make some new texture and actually apply them before we go ahead and just take the picture and reposition that camera. But that's going to be pretty much it for the first episode of the level design um, part of this tutorial, guys. We are going to make some new texture in the next one so we can get like this level ready. I want to change the wind box at least, that's the minimum. And I also want to change the border, have another texture on the border. Other than that, once that is completed, we can go ahead and just take some pictures of our level, use them as thumbnails and also reposition that camera when we start. And after that, we'll have our real first level one that we can you know do the uh, silver gold time all that kind of good stuff so yeah guys um if you enjoyed this video please leave it a like if you have any question or comment you can leave them in the comment section below also subscribe for more tutorial thanks again for watching and i'll see you in the next episode